I went to university many years to be able to pull this off. That's why they call me the wizard. It's hovering. Ooh. Oh, did you see that move? I made a wind current there and made it move. Sweet. Greetings. I'm Jake, Wizard4 at Midnight Science Club, and I'm quarantined and a little bored. So we thought we'd get together and do some science activities that will sharpen your science thinking skills. Now to get you in the proper frame of mind, I want you to consider this. I've got a tank of water and a couple of handballs, and I'm just gonna drop them in the water. What's gonna happen? Yep, that's right, they're gonna float. You've seen things float in water a thousand times in your life. You float in a swimming pool, you see a boat or a piece of wood floating on a pond. But I want you to consider this. Would it be possible for something to float in a gas instead of a liquid? So I'm gonna give you an activity you can do at home with stuff you'll find around the house. It's called hovering bubble. You're going to need some vinegar and baking soda. You'll also need a tank and a glass. And if you don't have a fancy tank like this one, you could use a, a mixing bowl or a bucket or even your kitchen sink. And finally, you're gonna need some soap bubbles. Now you can make some soap solution with dishwashing soap and water, but I use some uh, soap liquid that I got at the toy store and some plastic drinking straws. And I like straws because using them makes perfect round and clean bubbles. So the first thing to do is put some baking soda in your glass and put the glass in the bottom of the tank that you've got. And then very carefully pour some vinegar into the glass and try not to splash the vinegar everywhere. And boy, look at it bubble. Scientists call that action effervescence. Those bubbles come from a chemical reaction where the carbonate that's in the baking soda disengages and releases carbon dioxide gas. And there come the bubbles of CO2. Then you can very carefully blow a bubble or two and allow them to fall into the tank. The trick is to blow a nice medium sized thin walled without excess soap on it bubble. And look, the bubbles fall through the air above the tank, but they stop on the layer of CO2 and they float there just like the balls floated on the water in the other tank. That's amazing. The CO2 gas is more dense than the surrounding air and the air that's also inside the bubble. And say, well, have I ever seen anything like that before in my, in my everyday life? Think about that. Where would I see this outside? How about clouds? Have you ever seen clouds, layers of clouds floating on a more dense layer of air beneath? Same phenomenon. And we have the wizards hovering bubbles. Oh, there we go. Look at that one. That is a hovering bubble. I went to university many years to be able to pull this off. That's why they call me the wizard. It's hovering. Ooh. Oh, did you see that move? I made a wind current there and made it move. Sweet. It is a bit messy, so they have something to clean up after that, but you did learn some science. And what happened? A more dense solution was at the bottom, and this time it was a gas, and a less dense bubble floated on top of it. And you've seen that before. You've seen helium balloons go up in the air. Same phenomenon happened here. An airborne bubble, an air-filled bubble, was floating on a more dense gas. Thanks for joining this old wizard at Midnight Science Club. Now, while you're stuck at home, you've got a neat science activity you can do. And if you want to learn about more activities just like this one, join us on Instagram at Midnight Science Club.